I'm Barbara Sinclair, and this is The Amateur Academic. Previously on The Amateur Academic, we discussed nanotechnology and how to predict the future. We established three methods for predicting the future. Looking at the past, we examined the history of carbon nanotubes. Secondly, to look at the present, we took a tour of the nano realm. Thirdly and finally, we'll establish a physical limit of what is and what is not possible in future technology. To do that, we'll take something we've talked about previously, something that's actually not a physical law. It is more of an economic law, and that is Moore's Law. Moore's Law was founded by the Intel co-founder Gordon Moore in 1965. He stated and later revised that the number of transistors on a chip will double every two years. That is measured here in calculations per second per 1000 logarithmically. This scale here starts in 1900 and moves all the way to 2015. This is a wonderful scale to see Moore's Law in effect. It starts at the analytical engine, which was a theoretical computational machine invented by Charles Babbage. However, it was never completely built. Uh, moving right along into the electromechanical computation devices, we get into the culmination thereof in 1924 with the founding of IBM for business computation. Along comes World War II, and a new revolution begins in computation. The first generation computational devices using relays and vacuum tubes, increasing the calculations per second, ever so exponentially. The second generation occurred with transistors, transistors becoming uh, a mainstream production in 1957. This finally ended up with integrated circuits being invented by Jack Kirby in 1957, whereby the MOSFET was invented in Bell Labs in 1959. This is the technology we've been using ever since. Modern versions of integrated circuits really began in 1971 with Intel introducing the microprocessor into mass production. However, we are coming to a limit of silicon, even with third and fourth generation integrated circuitry. You can see this here. It's starting to plateau. Let's take a closer look at that. <clears throat> Around 2010, this technology started plateauing for certain properties. The power consumption, clock frequency, and thread performance started remaining stagnant. The density of the transistors still doubled every two years. However, as we stated before, this is going to come to an end with silicon. This will happen around 2019 to 2025. We will see the end of Moore's Law on silicon. But never fear, carbon is here. In 2018 to 2019, we'll start seeing MRAM memory produced using carbon nanotubes. Between 2020 and 2024, we'll start seeing carbon nanotube-based transistors, which will carry on Moore's Law which is very important to our economy. Indirectly, it is responsible for a large part of our economy. So the powers that be have a large incentive to keep Moore's Law in effect. That's why we can make assumptions based on Moore's Law that it will continue. Because as you can see on the previous slide, every time there was a new technological breakthrough which allowed our calculations per second to grow exponentially. And this will continue as a trend on into the future. So let's make some predictions about the future. What can we expect in the next eight to 10 years? Well, I think 3D printing will actually finally be ready to make mass produced goods. 3D printing and nanotechnology go hand in hand, whether it's biological, using protein based 3D printers are non-biological. We'll start seeing all kinds of things being produced. Viruses uh, will engineer T-cells with FDA approval uh, to fight cancer.
Other types of gene therapy will come online in the next 8 to 10 years and could be even FDA approved also. Carbon nanostructures will improve everyday products. Imagine anything and everything around you being improved finally with the mass production of carbon nanotubes. Now that we've solved all of the mass production problems of carbon nanotubes, you can expect the price and quality of carbon nanotubes to shrink and go up. This will lead to many products becoming stronger and lighter over the years. Products such as batteries, filters, solar cells, structures, engineering structures, automobiles, boats, cables, all kinds of materials, even clothing, could have carbon nanotubes in them. What about the next 15 to 25 years? We're going to start seeing atomic precision manufacturing. What is that? Drexler talked about atomic precision manufacturing. It's where you can as a factory, build things perfectly on the molecular level. Whether this will only be in the lab, or whether this will actually start making an impact on the market in the next 15 to 25 years is anyone's guess. However, this will exist in the next 15 to 25 years. Take a look around you at all of the products and devices in your area. They're built imprecisely, and they're very hard to mass produce. Imagine, if you will, being able to build everything around you on the atomic scale to perfection quickly and easily. That kind of change is coming in the next 15 to 25 years. Furthermore, quantum computing will finally be a reality. This will of course extend Moore's law quite possibly even further. Instead of ignoring quantum effects, we will embrace them in the next 15 to 25 years. Also, in the next 15 to 25 years, we can safely say that a simple simulation of the human brain will occur in real time. Now, this is not a person's brain, but just a generic brain. This will lead to a lot of great discoveries about the human brain. Bio nanotechnology to fight disease and aging will come online and will be in effect whether in the lab or actually approved, we will see all kinds of diseases being fought, including aging. This will change the way we perceive aging, the way we think about the economy. This will change so many things for us in the next 15 to 25 years. I really look forward to the world in the future, and I hope you do too.